Good morning. Good morning, Jeremy. Um, did you watch yesterday and smile? Well, I try not to um, smile too much because naturally it's quite a painful process having a, a Prime Minister resign. Um, the trouble is Boris was good on the big picture stuff, but the trouble is he, he just had a credibility problem. Uh, telling the truth and the whole truth was very difficult for him. And of course, he, he also created his own chaos. And um, you know, the, the pincher thing was a, was a classic, you see. He should have taken the whip straight away from him, admitted that he knew about it, um, and it would have been a bad incident because you shouldn't have put a person and like um, Pincher in, in charge of our welfare um, when he was a predator, basically. So, you know, but it was a wrong thing. But if he'd handled it differently, you see, and it was just, you know, I mean, I, I've sat in the, in the past in the, you know, in the <clears throat> committee meeting 14 and imbounces Boris and says, you know, well, it'll all be better and, you know, I'm going to change the culture in number 10. And I think the trouble was the culture was his and it, it was just impossible. But I think we do have to accept he did some very good things on vaccine. He, he, he stood up to the Russians like no other... Western leader, um, which you need to, the murderous regime, so of Putin. So, you know, but I think what we've got to do now um, is, you know, the party must pull itself together, the government must pull itself together and govern in the interim. And I think the party must, I think 40 days, I think, is, a, is the fastest we can sort of get, a, get, a, get the two candidates chosen by the MPs out to the party uh, members and get them to decide and get a new leader back in by, by September. I think that's the way forward. And I think the cabinet, those cabinet members that are still there in their, you know, in their briefs, in their portfolios is fine. But of course, you know, we've had three education ministers in less than three days. Um, the chaos has got to stop because the cost of living, the cost of energy, the cost of fuel to individuals, to businesses. Um, this is what really matters. And I think, you know, they, the, the, the public will not forgive the Conservative Party uh, if and, and they probably are going to take a while to forgive us anyway uh, if we sort of just turn in on ourselves and concentrate just on ourselves. If, we um, a lot remember of... we're running the country. Yeah. Some quick <clears throat> questions, Neil. Um, if you were still an MP, would you have withdrawn your support for Boris or is your bitterness from the point that you lost your seat? No, I think um, it's not. No, my bitterness is not. I'm, I'm not trying to be too bitter, to be honest with you. My my mother said, you know, never let it get in your gizzard. Now, we don't have a gizzard, uh, only chicken. But what she meant by that was don't get a hurt inside of you. So, no, it's not It's not sour grapes. I think I was sort of treated uh, far differently to, to Christopher Pincher and um, perhaps for a slightly less crime. But I, I did the right thing by resigning. So I'm not, not going over that. Um, and I actually had a lot of time for Boris when he was sort of hitting the balls cleanly. Uh, I would have withdrawn my support in the end because I think it became a matter, you see he kept saying it's about the big picture. Well, yeah. yes it was but it wasn't, you see, in the end it was about his character, unfortunately. Were you, were you surprised at the speed of the treachery of some of your ex-colleagues? Because it's pretty, pretty normal conservative way of being, isn't it? When they decide they want you gone. It's pretty quick. <laughs> We are we are a ruthless party, um, and I can say that, can't I? Um, and um, we are usually actually cleaner at getting uh, rid of leaders, if you like. But this was a this was a messy business, um, and it will leave scars. And you know, Boris did good, uh, but he had to go. Um, the interesting thing, of course, the the other night, and I did find that very uh, very amusing, was the, the the firing of Gove. You see, because this was a this was a shootout at the. OK Corral, because basically Boris would have decided that, that Michael Gove was about to resign, and so he fired him first before he had a chance. I mean, that was that was high drama, and as far as I could see, that was the final nail in would you, Boris's Would pocket. you, Neil, um, very quickly, a couple of things, uh, who would you back now? Who's your idea of the next leader and, by, by nature, then Prime Minister of this country? Well, I got sort of two, two, two candidates really. I actually think we shouldn't write off Rishi Sunak. I think he's done a lot of good, um, and he's a, re a real recognisable character. And he answers the question, and he knows his brief. Um, I think Penny Mordaunt would uh, be another sort of uh, interesting candidate to sort of be, bring somebody different in. Um, and again, sort of people like Tom Tugendhat. So you know, there is people there. Um, what the you can see the latest bedding. I've got the latest bedding on the screen. Ben Wallace, three to one favourite. Sunak, not for me. Four to one. Penny Morden. 
Yeah. Mm, six to one. Tom Tugan Hat, six to one. A Sajid, nine to one. No, Liz Trust, ten to one. It could be left field. Um, it, it'll be very interesting. Of course, the big criticism from certain members of the opposition, Angela Rayner, this morning, naturally saying, you know, Boris Johnson is a disgrace. He should be out the door. It should be a caretaker thing. You talked at the beginning of your answers about the need for speed. Are you one of those people who thinks that, there are, you know, he should stay in a caretaker role or not? Are you, are you happy with that? I think if we can, I think the, the sort of maximum speed we can get them down to two candidates by MPs, then out to the party members is 40 days, I think. If we can do that in 40 days, then I think, um, you know, the Prime Minister should stay where he is um, until we have elected a new leader and the party have had their say, not only the parliamentary members, because you see the party itself and everybody is very, very fractious, as you can imagine, after this. So 40 days is acceptable. What 40 I 40 days and 40 nights. Um, exactly. I, I don't think we will, well, you know, I don't think he can stay there, in my view, until October. I think we've got to make sure that you see, you've got recess now from Parliament, haven't you, in, in, in two or three weeks. Uh, not so much goes on uh, during August. I think we need a new leader in place when Parliament gets back in September. And can in I meantime, ask you, can I, I ask, must govern. Can I ask yeah, you well, personally, um, here you are back on television screens after by anybody's standards, a very traumatic slash embarrassing part of your career. Um, do you see a way back? Can you? Is politics something that you uh, are still interested in? Do you believe that you can get over what did? You fronted up about that. It's very interesting. But I'm getting a text from a man saying, what right does that human being have to tell Boris what to do after what he did? How would you answer that, Neil Parrish? Well, I think, you know, please put it in context. It was very wrong what I did. But I, I think, you know, I don't think I, I'm, well, I'm not a criminal and I never intended to do make offence to anybody and I was wrong in what I did and I resigned. So I think you've got to give me a little bit of credit uh, for, for that. And I think I don't want to sort of, I, I think I what I want to do, I, I still got a lot in my brain. Um, I'm still very much a, a political animal. And you, you know, you don't, you know, that doesn't die in you overnight. And so what I've got to do is sort of pick up the pieces now. Uh, I've apologised and I'll carry on apologising. Will you run again and try and win that seat back from the Liberal Democrats? Uh, you, you're not going to tempt me this morning into uh, any uh, decision like that because I think it's all too early. Um, I, what I am finding, I went to the Devon County show last Friday and people are coming up to me and saying, you know, you did the right thing by going, but we still got respect for what you did on agriculture, food. Um, I, I did a lot of work with Fair Share to try and get food out to those that most need it. So, you know, there's charity stuff too that I can look at on animal welfare and the environment and, and other issues. So school meals and the like, you see, because I was always a very independent um, member of the party and, and government because I was a select committee chair put there by Parliament and not by the whip. So, you know, you, you can always be independent. So I like um, your... Uh, I have to move on, Neil, but I like your honesty and I like the fact that you're saying what you're saying and you're coming out and you're being honest. And I appreciate you being on the show today. Neil Parrish, ex-MP for uh, Tory MP for Honiton uh, and Tiverton, of course.